arm because you're good at what you do. Get ready to clock in for night shift. Get some more money. Let's see what this is about tonight. Prowling around in these boiler tubes. I mean, this is a major boiler tube job. For those of you guys who've been out here at Plant Bowling, you already know what it is. But yeah, we about to get to it. Tubes as far as you can see it. As far as you can see it. We're here. Real ball to the job, baby. Yeah, we here. We're gonna make it happen tonight. Yeah, so we're gonna get it on. We're gonna be right here in this area. I'll keep you connected here in a little bit. It's very important you have to use a a mini rig when welding these tubes. As you guys probably already know, and you can see my little crude example of the, the ball that's on the TIG handle. These will be coming soon. Just going through uh, manufacturing companies and things of that nature, so for, and things of that nature. So be on the lookout for the new style TIG handle with the uh, ball on the tip of it. What it does is it makes it real comfortable for you to hold that. As you know, when you're going around those tubes, you want a, a natural grip opposed to having some type of skinny grip. Over a long period of time, it makes your hands a lot more comfortable. It's more ergonomic, more ergonomically efficient for you. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and switch out these TIG handles and uh, I'm gonna put the positive stop handle on. For those of you who don't know what the positive stop handle is, it's the, it's the actual handle with the uh, threads on the inside. So, Opposed to having what you see right there. The one thing about these boilers, sometimes you got to find your way in and out. This will be the entrance. Go on this way. Up to here. And this is be the exit. Coming out of here. All right. So today we in the boiler. Like I showed you already. This is real deal right here. Those of you who've been in these boilers, you already know how they are. Tight spaces, some spots. In this instance, we're pretty much in the open. If you look down there, the same way we got this set up here, we cut all these tubes out, made a pile, and they pretty much are doing the same thing I'm doing down here. We're gonna prep them for day shift and maybe day shift start welding but you know how it goes that's night nice shift guys we do all the work and day shift come and take all the credit sometimes it's vice versa but lately night shift will be the A side and we, we getting it done so. and when it comes to making these welds right here you can see for yourself yeah. Damn it, that was my wall. Shit. That's alright. Damn, damn, my God. What the hell going on here? Now, how am I gonna get that? Ah, man. But anyway, for those of you who've been in the boiler tubes, 
The best way to do this right here, whenever you're in a tight spot, getting ready to make a, a tube weld, this is what I do now. This, this works. I use a tight 332 gap with high heat. Why? Because sometimes you, you gotta use a mirror. And whenever you get your rod in position on that bevel, when that heliarc hit the metal, you want it to melt. You don't want it to play around. You don't want it to be cold. You don't want you want it to melt and fuse. So this is why I use high heat whenever it comes to welding, welding these boiler tubes in uh, tight spots. So if I'm in an extremely tight spot, again, I'm gonna use a tight gap, maybe like a 332 gap, preferably a 332 wire, but if I'm running really high heat, I use a 332 gap and a 1 8 wire. 30, my amps would be at 126, I'm trying to go real fast and, and I really want it melted and really want it done. Not really trying to be too careful about it. Just know where I'm gonna, what I'm gonna weld and, and, and get it done. I'm gonna have my heat at 130. 332 gap, 1 8 wire at 130 amps. You're gonna be sure to melt that beveled edge, that wire and the top bevel edge. And, and that's it, just go with it. A little bit of pressure on that wire and then you can do the back and forth motion over the wire, or you can go just right at the bevel, over the wire to the next bevel. Just a tight weave, just a little bit of pressure on that wire. And after you get done with one quarter, take your light in there and look at that, and you'll, you'll be amazed. For those of you guys out there who haven't done boiler tubes. And even for one of the tubes that's in the open, like this back, this front end, and the back end, that'll be the easier ones to do. Same thing, same principle but I probably would cut my heat to a, a 125, 126 amps, a 1 8 wire with a tight 1 8 gap. And just do the same thing. Walk over the wire with a little bit of pressure on the wire or do a weave motion, top bevel, wire, bottom bevel. Just that little weave motion with a little bit of pressure on the wire and just look at what you got going on. And that's, that's pretty much how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna be showing you some footage of what we got going on off and on throughout this video. I might stop and talk and you know how we do. But yeah, this is where we at. My buddy welder, he's way down there on the other end. Let's see if we can take a look at it. Yeah, all the way up on those ends, the green desk. But I'm with another guy, we're gonna see him, we're gonna talk to him. He's kinda young, real nervous, but uh, he's doing a really good job. So basically tonight, all we're gonna be doing is just prepping, prepping these sections right here for a day shift to come in and, and get the welding done, which is a good thing. I mean, who the hell wanna be down on their knees? You know, I, of course I wear the knee pad, and it's a really good help. But just imagine, let's see if I can get down here. Ah! How are we gonna weld this here? So, put down like this right here. And here's the motion. Yeah. Yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> so, as you can see, I mean, I can't stress. You heard Chase on the other video. You better be in shape. Yeah, no more, no more I can say about it. Be in shape, be the best version of yourself, and know that, hey, your job is on the line. If you come into a ball of two job and you're a welder, and you're not on shape, and you're not in shape, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna put you on cutting these two. They cut it out like a rigger. They're gonna, they're gonna put you as if you're a rigger. You're gonna be the one to cut them out, and remove it, and stand on the outside of the hole, and hand people tools, and, and get rusty you know, as far as your welding ability. Cause you're gonna be, your, the whole time you're on the job, they're gonna be using you as a helper. So who the hell wants that? Who wanna sit around on a 12 week job and, and just get rusty? Not I, it's the that. These tight spots, up and down the ladder. Those the other guys are on there.
I'm going to get on to work and uh, see what we can do, see what we can make up tonight. And again, keep in mind, it's a very dirty job. Sometimes people like to wear coveralls. I don't necessarily wear coveralls unless it's a really dirty job. If it's just like dirt on the ground, hey, sometimes when you get dirty, it feels good. It feels like you're working. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to catch y'all on the other side. Let me walk down this ladder and see if I can grab my fiber glove. And this is the little tight, this is the little tight hole you have to squeeze through to get in here. I mean, no joke, right? <laughs> as, as small as I am, my whole back covered that hole, so hey, I know I like to put emphasis on being in shape. It's just that, hey, if don't nobody tell you, I'ma tell you. And a lot of times, these boilers is where the money is for the season or even for that particular moment. Like I said, a 12 week, 16 week job, you wanna get in where you can fit in, in terms of having employment, keeping the money rolling, so. I'm six foot two. Hey, it is what it is. Let me make my way up this line.